Are you ready to rumble? Joining me for tonight's Big Picture Rumble, Neil McCain, uh, McCabe, excuse me, columnist with Human Events, Richard A. Fowler, Democratic Strategist and Advocacy Director for the Young Democrats of America, and Tony Katz, host of the Tony Katz Radio Show on the All Patriots Media Network. <laughs> hey, uh, radio well guys, I got it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Look at that uh, kinship. Gentlemen, uh, CPAC is in town, and beyond all the over the top rhetoric about uh, President Obama, the Republicans, uh, don't seem to have much to be excited about. Santorum has taken three states. Uh, Romney still looks like the inevitable nominee. Gingrich is in the tank. He's van well, the guy who was funding him is, seems to have stopped giving him his money. In fact, uh, Shelley Adelson has said now he'll give some money to Romney if he, you know, if he gets it. And on top of that, the economy is improving. There's a new poll showing 20% of Republicans today would likely vote for Obama. And, you know, this is pretty scary. So how much of a bummer is CPAC this year? It, uh, first of all, I have to completely disagree with everything. I reject the premise. The people <laughs> at CPAC are actually jovial. The throngs of people and the level of applause at CPAC for Santorum, for Romney, for Gingrich was unbelievable. Even Ann Coulter, who wrote the Three Cheers for Romney Care article that had so many conservatives up in arms, got huge laughs and huge cheers today. Santorum has raised $3 million in three days. No Nobody's bothered. Everybody is absolutely oh, thrilled. Was Just show up. There was an insane mob following around Ann Coulter for her book signing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the the, the Gingrich people bust in by the, the Gingrich speech. Was, no, no, Ron was, Paul wasn't there this time. The Gingrich speech. There was hooting. There was whistling. There was cheering. And the Romney speech. Romney's speech. I think there was a Oddly of those, enough, maybe. I mean, it, there was excitement during the pro-life stuff. I'll give you that. You ask some of the, the the guys on Radio Row though, who attended the Romney speech, they'll tell you it's the best they've seen Romney. That Romney did a pretty good job of trying to say, "Listen, I'm not saying it just to say it. I will actually do these things. I this am is, actually that conservative." This is the first CPAC for. I've missed in five years. Were you there, Richard? I was not at CPAC. Oh. You know, I try to stay away from events like that, yeah. just because the crowd might just get a little bit uh, really, okay. too okay. overruly for me. I, I, I get it. <laughs> Well, not. in that in that in that context, then why didn't the Republicans invite President Obama to CPAC? He passed a health care bill that was virtually line for line what R Richard Nixon proposed in 1973. He proposed cap and trade legislation. Is that is that he proposed? Let me get to Let me get He wasn't invited. He just let me get a page through all. this list for a second, and then uh, I'll show it to you guys. He proposed cap and trade legislation that was proposed by Reagan, that was passed by George Herbert Walker Bush, and still works to this day to keep down sulfur dioxide. He signed the START Treaty. That Reagan was pushing, and he's kept taxes at the same rate as even the second. But if you talk to certain admirals out there, they'll tell you the START Treaty was absolutely unnecessary. This is a conversation that could have happened between two gentlemen to reduce the level of nuclear arms. The treaty was absolutely unnecessary. It puts America in a very bad position. It's an extremely bad precedent. So let's not talk about the START Treaty and everything so else on your list Reagan is three quarters nonsense and one quarter ridiculous. <laughs> Obama's not coming to CPAC. You know who came to CPAC? The occupiers today. They're the ones who want to show up to CPAC. They're the ones who wanted to. To say, you know, they're the ones who said that Mitt Romney has Social Security uh, Secret Service protection. Sorry, but uh, but Gingrich and and uh, Andrew Breitbart they don't, which is a threat. So that's what you're saying. Richard, they were so Obama was busy. They were teamsters so dressed like occupiers. Hey, uh, they were Richard, they, 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 they they the they were teamsters who showed up. I saw, up I, like I, occupiers. I, 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 I oh, talked with one of one of the occupiers. I, I talked with one of the occupiers who was there who told me that they had put uh, duct tape across their mouths and written on it, if money is speech, then poverty is silence. That's a pretty powerful statement. And, that, and, that's completely, that's, and that's completely right, Tom. At the end of the day, CPAC, even though it's a great event for Republicans, we all know that Republicans will line their pockets with corporate dollars and corporate funds, and, you know, they protect their millionaire and billionaire friends. Except Stop. for the Obama Super PAC. That one, that's fine. Oh, wait, hold on that's a second. That's fine. Wait, 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 We're leveling the playing field. The Obama Super PAC has not raised nearly as much as oh, the so Romney Super PAC. Oh, so how much that Obama or the bad or the Your Santorum problem. That's what, you, that's what you're doing. Your problem is that Obama Listen, a, listen, listen, a week ago listen. you had a principle. Now you Hold have on an a excuse. Second. First of all, why would we ever go to? Why would we ever show up to a gunfight with a knife? Second of all, second of all, President Obama was at was vehement, was vehemently against Citizens United. He should stick it to was, his It was the Republican Supreme. It was the Republican Supreme Court. He's the same guy who said he wouldn't. He said he was going to take public stick to his finance. principles and lose. 
And by the way, what's with the knife to your principles? What happened to the principles. new town? And by the way, even when you lose, you stick to your principles. That's okay, why we're well, going to win in Obama. Well, uh, well, Mitt Romney does not stick to his principles. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just we say don't that. Because we don't know what his principles are. We don't well, know. Well, we'll give him a chance. And, and I'd say the same for the thrice married uh, Newt. But in, 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 speaking oh, of principles, that, uh, he yeah, found the Lord after that last marriage. Yes, of course. That's very convenient. Birth control. The president came out with some changes today to his recent decision to force religious institutions. Yeah, he did. Change. He, he basically did. said he, that the, the insurance said companies, that the insurance can pay, companies have to pay, but the pay. companies that pay the insurance companies are still on the hook. Okay, so Catholics United came out in favor of it today. The trade association, which represents Democratic University, the, the Democratic the, Front Group, the, the the trade association that represents 618 Catholic hospitals, virtually every Catholic hospital in the United States, came out in support of this today. That is not a Democratic organization. So did the U.S. And, Council of Bishops and the U.S. Council of Bishops. So uh, you know, I. I I think this was a significant thing. Did no, Obama it, it, use jiu-jitsu and basically flip this thing over his I, shoulder? I, I, and, I, I, and second question, and then I'll let you go, mm -hmm. is was this a ginned up controversy to change the media narrative? Because everybody was talking about how the economic numbers were looking good and Obama was looking good, and all of a sudden it was like, we got to come we, up with we something. Got, we got to stop. Well, you think the bishops are way too clever. You know, the economic numbers, when you don't include 1.2 million people and who's unemployed, of course you're going to have a better number. The problem is that Obama can't do math. Here's the issue with, with what we're talking about with the contraception. It's not about the, the, even the supplying. It's about whether or not you can mandate to a charity or to a, a, a religious organization or to the companies that they have to provide well, Why did X. George Bush do it? It is about, this is about whether or not Obamacare has validity, whether or this not it's not Obamacare. People. George W. Bush did this. So what we are talking about. We are talking about the now. Is what is it that we expect from governments? What is it we value from government? And Something where different does government, than when George Bush where does government's line control. be drawn? And Listen. you keep bringing up George Bush as if it's somehow going to attack this me. This policy has been in place since 2000. And you're but wrong. But the truth of the matter is that we know that 99% of women at some, at some point in time in their lives depended on birth control. Right? 98% of Catholic women. Right. 98% of Catholic women. Who answered your poll? Well, you know, you could talk to Rasmussen about that if you like. But the point of the, the simple Dude, fact is, is that 99 percent, 99 percent of women have depended on birth control. It is Depend unjust. On it is, listen, let me finish. It is unjust for us to say that we're not going to provide birth control to women, but we provide why? erectile dysfunction pills to men. Why is it unjust? On, on the insurance. Why on, is it unjust not to provide birth control? What is the harm? Well, here's here's one. 14, Honestly, what's the 14 harm? percent. No, and seriously, Neil, let me answer this. 14 percent of women who take birth control pills right now, regularly, okay. are doing so because it's, they have a genuine medical condition. Exactly. And, uh, and you know, to would, prevent things like ovarian cysts or, or to deal with, you know, violently painful So canonically, that's have, not birth control. So the intent is not birth control. The intent is another medical condition. It's a medical reason. condition, but you sure, want to say they shouldn't have access so to that medicine. And the birth control is a side Absolutely effect. Absolutely not. That's not what he's saying at all. That's an awful, awful manipulation. Don't do it. It's the truth. It's, it's not the absolutely. truth. It's, it's, I'm not it's saying kill those women. You're both wrong. It's absolutely not. There's women who have dysmenorrhea because they have dysmenorrhea. And therefore, they have birth control. Nobody can hear us. If, if more than two people are talking, it just becomes a blur to our viewers. Sure, sure. So, you know, you were saying. Uh, wh what Neil's saying is, is, is dead on. If you're talking about it as a medical condition, it's about it being a medical condition. The fact that you use it and it happens to be birth control isn't about the conversation about birth control. It's about what government can force you to do. And I am one of those people, as a Tea Partier and proud of it, can, it tells you that government cannot be forced to tell you what to do. That is the issue. That is always the conversation. Where is the line drawn about what government can do to you? Oh, it's Obama who famously said that he didn't like the Constitution because it was a, a charter, a grouping of negative charters. It talks about what government can't do to you as opposed Charter to what government right. must do for you. That's a mistake. That is the, that is the biggest problem with President but Obama. What he values in the Constitution is simply backwards. But, but, but hold on one no, second I thought, here. I I got it right. Hold on one second. George W. Bush, in op, when he was in office, he wanted to pass a constitutional amendment that says that people, that people of the same sex can't get married. That tells the government what you can and cannot do. Why I is think, that any different? Because I think government should be out of marriage altogether. Now that's over. Let's go back to my subject. Yeah. Why should government be here in the business? Of dictating what a healthcare company government, should do. But the government's not in the business. The government is protecting these women so no. they can get birth control. No, I'm that's that's because, because, because healthcare is part of the commons. Because it's part of the general welfare birth of the United States. Birth control isn't healthcare. No, it's yes, not. It, it is for 14 percent of women. And, that, and, and we already, and, Tony and I and, already agree with you on that. If you consider being Tony. pregnant a medical condition, it's always healthcare. The founding no, no. fathers didn't fight and die for health care. They fought and died for liberty and freedom. So do, obviously, do you know they didn't who the first in? president was to sign legislation that gave free health care to people? Jeepers, I don't know. Tom, tell George me. Washington. I will be fascinated. Yes. 
George Washington. Oh. Anyhow, let's move also along to the XL. He's Valley Forge. Keystone XL pipe. I, so I mean, where are we going? I didn't. I didn't know that, and I find it hard to believe. So it looks like the Keystone XL pipeline is back. The House Energy and Commerce Committee revived the uh, pipeline this week, uh, and 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 even to bring that up is like really nasty. I mean, that's that's just uh, uh, the highway bill. If if I if I heard you right, well, in, in any case, the House Energy and Commerce Committee revived the pipeline. Uh, this week passing legislation. Basically, I don't need to read this stuff. They, the Republicans are going to hold the, the, this uh, infrastructure bill hostage mm -hmm. to, to, to get the XL pipeline pushed through, which is you know, fast transport of oil from Canada to refineries in Texas where they can be exported. Our number one manufactured export right now in the United States is gasoline. So this is more, more gasoline for export, more money for ExxonMobil. China in the last decade and a half has, has built 5,000 miles of high-speed rail. We have none. Why are we having a national debate about high-speed transportation of oil from one end of the country to the other, and nobody's talking about high-speed transportation of people? Uh, I'll give you one, one of the great answers, because it doesn't work. And you can talk about high-speed rail going from Tampa to Orlando, for example, in the I-4 corridor. You can talk about it going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, going up the 15. high-speed rail doesn't work, and why is every other country in the world that has you, the ability Because to do those it? countries I, I, are built for it. You're talking I, about uh, certain issues with culture. You're talking about certain issues with Tom, I call I, the Chinese I news very closely, and there are huge Let, problems with the Chinese high rail. And they are reconsidering oh, I, oh, their commitment on, to high-speed rail hold on one for second safety here. and other reasons. If I can pause for a second. So we're saying that high-speed rail is a bad thing. We're the only developed country in the world that doesn't have it. Not to mention the fact that every billion dollars, and these are the facts, folks, every billion dollars you spend on transportation spending in the United States creates 34,000 jobs. If the it, Keystone Pipeline is only going to create, at best, 150 jobs. If it's, so profitable, if it's so profitable, some greedy billionaire will build that railroad for you. Yes. The, well, the Keystone Pipeline... Oh, my God, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the, the Keystone Keystone Pipeline is private money. It's not taxpayer money. You just stop. You don't have to do anything. Private enterprise. Where's that land going to come from? Eminent domain. But I'm just saying. It's, yeah, it's just <laughs> coming from us, the taxpayers. We're, we're going to give those sooner. I They're just going to take it. They're just going to take it, and they want and and you know. So no, you're not. You're not right. It, it, that that's the government. And and what happened? I thought you were so opposed to the government telling us what we could and couldn't do. What about people who don't want to give up their land for the pipeline? Well, you're, if you want to have an eminent domain conversation, let's have an eminent domain conversation, whether or not that's legitimate and, and that's a value. I think that's a very worthwhile conversation. And, and when you take a look at the Keystone Pipeline, you're if, there, if, if no, there, it's, no, not the, at all. The, the company fact has that an obligation. You consider to buy agreement that land. filibustering? You hang the around with way too many I mean, leftists. The company has an obligation to buy the land, even if the people that own land don't want to sell the land. Well, yeah, really? They, then obviously it's they have okay to buy when it. local they governments do it, it. For, a, for a highway. You're not. You have no problem with oh, that. I'm, you have I'm, a problem with I'm, this. I'm, we're just talking about eminent domain about the Keystone Hysterical. Pipeline. Yeah. Saying, and not to, and the other. I just, I, I, I'm still <laughs> amazed that we're trying to move oil across the country. We're not we're trying not to move interested people. in moving people. Or, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the railroad. Where, the where do you want to build it? Start. Where do you I mean, want to build a high speed the rail? That thing in California is a disaster. Or how about across the country? I mean, you know. Anyhow, and who's going to use it? Amtrak doesn't make money. They lose money every year. Who's going to use it, Tom? It is it is serving the public good. Oh, good lord. Let's let's get back to this in just a second. Coming up, a big week for equal rights in America. So why aren't Republicans happy? More rumble after the break. Obama is beatable in 2012. Whenever government says they're going to keep you safe, get ready because you're going to lose your freedoms. Sometimes you see a story and it seems so whole and complete, you think you understand it, and then you glimpse something else. You hear or see some other part of it and realize everything you thought you knew, you don't know. I'm Tom Hartman. 
Welcome to the big picture. Welcome back to the Rumble on the panel tonight. Neil McCabe, Richard A. Fowler, and Tony Katz. Let's get back to it, guys. A good day for equal rights in America. Federal appeals court, uh, Ninth Circuit Court, struck down California's Prop 8, which bans same-sex marriage. Justice Judge uh, Stephen Reinhardt wrote in the majority opinion, Proposition 8 serves no purpose and has no effect other than to lessen the status and dignity of gays and lesbians in California and to officially reclassify their relationships and families as inferior to those of opposite-sex couples. End quote. And the Washington State Legislature last week passed same-sex marriage laws. Uh, I, I think probably by now Governor Gregoire has signed it or is about to. But not everybody's happy. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich went off on this thing. Newt, uh, Mitt, Mitt today said, today unelected judges cast aside the will of the people of California who voted to protect traditional marriage. Actually, it was yesterday, I think. And Gingrich said, Court of Appeals overturning California's Prop 8 is another example of an out-of-control judiciary. So looking back 10 or 20 years from now, are we going to be looking at this as, you know, in, a, in a way that we now look back in, 19, in the 1960s at the, end of the, fi the final end of miscegenation laws? Or even the end of 1973 when the, uh, the courts uh, legalized abortion and people are still ticked off about it. Okay, so you think this is a, this is a disaster rather than a... Than a, than a well, I mean, it's, it's so absurd that, uh, that a court could take a con declare a constitutional amendment unconstitutional is just absurd, and I don't think that... Well, it was a state constitutional and that, amendment, and they and declared it a violation court judge, of the U.S. That federal judge has no standing to tell the people of California what it to do. It was a three-judge panel. That three-judge well, panel has the, no standing yeah, to tell the people listen, what to the do. The truth of the matter is, is we, we depend upon our courts to, make the, to help the little guy. We saw that in Brown versus Board of Education where, the state said, where they said segregation in school is unconstitutional. On top of that, the folks that parade the Constitution like Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney, but the, but the Constitution says pretty clearly life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you love somebody, you deserve the right to marry them. That's your happiness. And how, can, how, can the gov how dare the government infringe on a person's happiness? Okay, we we gotta, should, by yeah, the way, we got to wrap it at that. I'm, sorry. I'm it's, fine it's, with it's government time. being out of marriage. Marriage, but this is out of control time judiciary. Part, time Let's for our quick fire. Okay, last question, quick fire. Mississippi State Representative Steve Holland made news this week. He came up with a new way to help show Mississippi's particular distaste for Mexicans by introducing House Bill 150, that in Mississippi would rename the Gulf of Mexico to the Gulf of America. So here we go with Freedom Fries all over again. Aside from the fact that we can't actually rename an international body of water, what else might Republicans target for renaming in the coming weeks? For example, how about A, New Mexico? Instead of calling it New Mexico for obvious reasons, let's call it New America. Or the, the city my, where I used to live, Montpelier, Vermont, which has already been anglicized. People come, would come to town and say, is this Montpelier? No, no, no. Anyhow, how about instead calling it Mount America, since it sounds too French? Or Diablo Canyon, California, instead calling it Jesus Canyon? I don't know. Suggestions, Neil? Uh, I would really like to change uh, Mount Rushmore to Mount Rush Limbaugh. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Richard, your thoughts? Well, you know, I, that's a really good one. I think, you know, and especially in a place like Alabama, we should probably n rename Birmingham to Obama, the city of Obama. Why not? <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I think there are way too many serious issues to discuss, like Operation Fast and Furious. And by the way, this network should be ashamed of itself for hiring Julian Assange. Absolutely disgusting. Shame on you. Okay. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't started yet. Uh, <laughs> my suggestion is that uh, ditching the name America and calling it, as the Fire Sign Theater says, Vespucci Land. Here we go. Trying to get the Italian viewer. Got no clip? No. <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had a uh, God bless Vespucci land, a uh, little audio clip there. It was too patriotic. Uh, yeah, well, you know, America was named after Marigo Vespucci because they, they, they got the, 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 they read the map wrong and should have been Vespucci land. Anyhow, mistakes were made. Richard, a new team Tony, in place. thanks a lot for being here. Thanks, Tom. Thanks,